Okay, here's the first one. Um, Kathy sent these rice sack masks and the auction's over, but I thought they were really unique. Oh, oh someone else is coming in. Yeah, that's Susan Kine. Okay, and then there was a SF Gate um, article a while back that said, which were the best and worst face masks. And the most interesting thing I thought was that silk is better than cotton hmm. for protection. And then there's a polypropylene, which you could buy at Walmart for uh, filters. And they sell it in sheets, I think. And I think Jill provided you an article from San Francisco Chronicle that's probably similar to this. Should I go on? Did you let her in? Yeah, she's in. Okay. 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 These are the people who contributed photos or tips for this presentation. So we're going to go to Carrie Yoshida first. Mm. And Carrie, I put your tip because you package your thing so nicely. So I made <laughs> that your tip. So if, okay. So if you have anything to say here, let's see. Um, so I bought, I don't know if you could see it. It's like a seven by seven clear envelope. Oh. And yeah. I just printed a little label so that people know that I've washed it twice and I, um, and they're able to insert the uh, liner inside the mask. And this pattern that I used was what JSA provided in the very beginning. And I, I just got really good at it. <laughs> and so I didn't want to change. So I, right now I'm making the medium and the large. I am not making small because I haven't gotten a lot of requests for small, which is like for a child. Mm. But um, uh, people have told me that they're comfortable. Um, I, I did change the ear cording to um, what, uh, the surgical masks are using, and they seem to be much more comfortable. Um, I usually put a flannel liner or a broadcloth liner. And um, as because flannel is so warm, um, I switch to the broadcloth for the summer months. So that's what I've been using right now. But what I would like, I want to shop for more beautiful Asian fabrics. And that's what, I, what my question was. <laughs> okay. I have a list for you at the end. And people could Great. add to the list, OK? Great. Are there any questions for Carrie? I'm going to move on then. Yeah. OK, this is for Lori, but she's not here. Um, but her main tip was uh, using elastic loops instead of fabric ties. So here are her notes. There, I have no photos from her. I guess some people have been using hair bands too, but um, she said she had to extend the mask pattern on the side so they would fit. So she's been using 1 8 inch elastic, the soft kind. Mm. So we'll move on to K. And Kay's not here either. She used coffee filters for mask filters. And here's a photo of her um, mask. It looks real comfortable. And then this is the inside. And so she put a nose piece in. So we don't have Kathy Kojimoto either. She is, this is in the beginning, she used a surgical mask as a template since patterns weren't available and people were trying to figure out what to do. And her main tip was to make sure you gather all your supplies before you start. So here are some of the masks she made. 
And then here, and she said she's currently recommending the dish pattern is round, but she hadn't finished any for the um, slide presentation. And here's her supply list, it's a basic list. Okay, next I have Linda. And her pattern was the Kaiser pattern. So Linda, I'm gonna let you go from here. Okay, so um, I started making masks because um, the place, one of my clients, um, they like didn't have any PPE and um, I didn't have any elastic. <laughs> so I had to look for a mask pattern that um, you could make ties out of. And it turned out that I had a lot of material from when I used to make my kids pajamas. Um, so there you have it. Uh, um, let's see. I don't know you, if you have, um, I did have the other tip, which was um, how, to, how to organize uh, and mass if you have, you know. I didn't get that one. Oh, okay. Is it this? this one? Yeah, that one. Yeah. yeah, so this is something my husband put up. It's a metal bar and we had a bunch of these uh, magnetic clips. So it's in our laundry room. So we can just stick the mask there after they come out of the washer and dryer. And it's been tremendously helpful. It's a really clever idea. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have Anne next. And wait till you see her masks. Anne? Yeah. You want to say something? So, um, I used a pattern uh, that was on a YouTube video. Uh, and like Carrie said, um, when I, once I got it down, I would just stick to that pattern um, because, and just perfected on that and just made small changes. The pattern called for a three ply. So you'd have a pocket insert to put a filter in. Um, and then when I started to give them away to friends, uh, they didn't seem to uh, use that insert pocket. And it was one extra step for making these masks. So I just started to do two ply uh, masks. Uh, my tip is that to get some kind of wire uh, to insert at the top of the mask. Uh, there were some people who had glasses and had problems with the, their glasses fogging up if they weren't able to press the top um, of the mask against their nose. So the wire really helped. And I had access to a bunch of wire that uh, was used um, in a lab for like insulation. And so I just started to cut pieces of this off. But I had a friend who was using um, the ties that you get uh, when you buy bulk coffee in, in big, you know, uh, pound bags. And it's kind of thick, it's about a quarter inch thick and maybe five inches long. So that was a good length for um, the piece that goes over your mm. nose. Um, okay. I started to, I used elastic uh, bands for over the years. And um, some people like them and some thought it hurt a little bit behind the ears. And um, when I talked to Linda, she was telling me about the cloth uh, ties. And so I'm gonna try that, but that's an extra sewing step that I'm not ready <laughs> to, to get into right now. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I've had um, access to a lot of fabric that I've collected over the years. And um, when I lived in Japan, I would, you know, go to these flea markets. And when I'd go to, you know, out of town, I would always look for Ace Hardware or um, fabric stores. And so I've just had this collection of, of fabric and not really taking the time to um, to use any of it. And now with this pandemic, you know, I have to stay home a lot and, and I also retired. So I, I've just been um, having fun uh, making these masks with different fabrics. But there are a lot of online um, offerings for fabric. Um, they take long to deliver, you know, because of the pandemic. But 
some food thing. Like I made one, I think right there, there's a, a, a um, noodles, a bowl of noodles. That was kind of fun. And then the Shiba Inu. Yeah, so um, oh, that was from some quilting show. But uh, what I like to do is just to try different fabrics. Uh, most of it is cotton. I haven't tried silk yet. I do have some silk, but it's very fine material. And I feel like I'm gonna, you know, uh, I make a lot of mistakes and have to do a lot of seam ripping, which I don't like to do. So, um, but the fabric for um, yukatas, the, the cotton uh, jackets, um, it's a really nice weight. And I found for the summer months, that was, uh, I just cut up an old yukata that I had and uh, made the, the checkerboard uh, mm. base mask. Um, yeah, it's, 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 uh, I'm inspired by using the different fabrics to doing this and, um, uh, and have a, a supply to work with a, a fabric, but you can also like cut up, um, shirts, you know, that have really interesting designs. Like I had some of my dad's Hawaiian shirts and that he never wore. That was and it was kind of cool. So anyway, that's my story. Nice. Sorry, that was my phone. Okay. Is Vicki here? Mm. I didn't see her sign in. Let's see, a few people joined though. Kay joined and um, Josie. And, uh, and Victor, well, Victor's not on, but Josie is. And June's on. Okay. Uh, Kathy Lee. You want me to go back up to Kay? Well, I have Vicki, Karen Morioka, myself, Kathy, and John. So those were the last ones. So the only ones we didn't do was Kay and Kathy, and we just went through their slides. You want me to go back to Kay, Kay Atabes here? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll go back, I'll go back up. Okay, Kay, do you have... Um. Sorry, I, you know, I just got back from a doctor's appointment, but um, I did this because I found that um, I felt like I, the pleated ones were more comfortable than the, than the fitted ones, although I think the fitted ones are better for protection. Um, but these were just really comfortable. And because I like the idea of having the channel and having a lining so I could put a filter in it, and because I like the nose piece, I... I adapted it to that, which made it kind of a lot of work. <laughs> um, the ties I used were the ones that someone just mentioned, the, those round soft ones from Amazon. And um, I got lazy. I have three pleats on the front side and I just have two pleats on the back side. So it was kind of a hassle to make, but I find them more comfortable. Mm, okay. But as I say, when I want more protection, I use the, uh, I, I use, I, I kind of adjusted the, the pattern that JC was using. Okay. That's about it. I wish I was able to join earlier. Well, we're recording it, so. Ah, okay. okay. I'm going to go down to, back to Vicky's. Is she here? I had to turn off my phone because it was ringing. Oh, no, I don't think Vicky's oh. here. Kathy Lee's okay. here. I don't have. No, nothing from Kathy. Okay. No. Okay. So, uh, Vicky, when she made the filter pockets, she suggested making them smaller so you could see by her slide that it, light, it lays a little flatter. And then she used a soft round elastic. And she found the JSA mask came down past the nose. So she's made various types like uh, the pleated ones that Kay just did. 
I kind of thought it was interesting. She used a non-woven fabric that for reusable grocery bags. Oh. I'm not sure how that. I'm not sure how that works, but um, oh. that was something different. And she's doing something. She's called an origami type mask, and I think this might be the 3D mask, mm -hmm. which Kathy could talk about a little bit later because Kathy's done that. Go here. Is Karen Morioka here? No, Karen's not okay. here. Well, hers is very organized here. Her first one is the JSA pattern, and then she said if you wear it upside down, it keeps the mask from going down from the nose. And then she had another pattern. She had another pattern I was going to ask her, but it's a Japanese mask pattern, and I'm not sure where she got that one. And she used interface, interfacing inside. And then she did a rectangle, the, the surgical mask type. And she used the coffee bag uh, uh, tie for the nose piece. I know a lot of people were doing that. And then she, this is how many masks she's made out of the roll of elastic, 200. Wow. And she cut down the JSA pattern for a kindergartner. Mm -hmm. Here's mine. Our glasses were fogging up and I had given neighbors and my son and his friends the JSA pattern, but a lot of people wore glasses. So this is, I started with this mask and then I found this one. It's called the Jesse Killian pattern and they're custom fitted, but you have to measure people. So I only made them for the family <laughs> it, because it doesn't really, I found that his, this is the pattern and it came in eight sizes before down to like a quarter inch and now it comes in 18 sizes. He's an engineer and he took the craft passion mask, the JSA mask, and he um, reconfigured it. Um, I used nose pieces. I used double wide flat plastic first and that bends and unbends really well. I have some aluminum ones now, but I haven't tried it, but I heard they aren't as good. I started out with one eighth inch corded elastic, but it's had a hard core on the inside. So I had a zigzag stitch to get it to stay down, otherwise your needle breaks. Then I went to a flat one eighth inch elastic and it's easier to sew with. And now I have a soft elastic and toggles that I haven't done anything with. Um, I underlined the mask, the front and back with midweight Pellon instead of buying what, what he used was MERV 13. It's a fabric for air filter that stops air particles as small as 0.03 microns. And that comes in sheets and that's on Amazon. It's kind of expensive though. I think uh, one of the sheets I saw for the M MERV 13 was $26 and there's a MERV 16 also and it was $40. I, you probably could get a lot of masks out of it, but anyway. Um, when I replaced, the pattern comes with ties and I did elastic loops but they have to be custom fit for a secure fit too. Cause I found like somehow on my left ear, it has to be tighter than my right ear. Otherwise it kind of lets in the air. So it's real secure because it's custom. But the golfers I play with and people with hearing aids, they like the fabric ties better. It, the loops have knocked off my husband's hearing aids a couple times already. And then I had to go one size down from my initial measure, measurements. Any questions? Okay, then I'm going to go to Kathy Ueno. Actually, Carolyn, on your fabric ties, on your yes. fabric ties, are they still tied so that they go around the ear or to the back of the head? Back of the head, and okay. they're longer now. Back of the head and then around the neck, too. Okay. So, let's see. So, the, on the left, there's, it goes on top. It fits on top of a golf cap real well. It doesn't fall off. So, and the ladies like it better because you do take off your mask sometimes when you're playing. The course requires that you keep the mask on till you tee off and then you can take it off, but they keep it around their neck and then they can put it back up. But my husband's group, they all keep their masks on. They're all like in their seventies and eighties. So when they play, they keep the masks on for the whole four hours. So. It, the elastic really has to be comfortable. Okay, Kathy has hers here. Um, 
I'm gonna let Kathy talk. The, this one was uh, designed by a nurse and um, it's different because if you see the, the picture at the bottom, there's a loop there. If you picture it, it's like a, a, a U where the string goes all the way through to the top where it's, it's, um, there's beads at the end. The loop at the bottom is what you place over your head and it sits on the back of your neck. And then you pull up the strings and the mask and that comes across and over your face. Then you take the ends of the, t of the string and you tie it at the back of your head. And I selected that because I thought it would be better coverage from the um, face, you know, the chin and up. Um, but what I didn't like about it after wearing it for a while was that I didn't get enough breathability. It just seemed to stick too much to my mouth and my nose. Um, so I was on the prowl for a better mask that had breathability. This actually does allow for a filter. You can see that line across there um, where I could put in a filter. And I actually purchased, uh, my sister found it. It's um, from a company called Filti, F-I-L-T-I. And that sounds like it's similar to the Merv 13 because I think we paid close, around $25, including shipping for a, a big sheet. I can't remember the dimensions of it, but I, um, have used that on these masks and will and are am also using them on the one I just created that uh, we'll see in a minute. Uh, but also on this, in case you are using um, ties in the back, I got toggles. You can see those little black things at the and in, in between the two masks, um, and I put those. Uh, on the mask on the right, you can see I've used a toggle on the end instead of the opening opened end, because that made a lot easier for us instead of tying it just to draw it up against our head. Um, the other problem I had was, I guess it might have been just the cord I used. It just happened to be what I had around the house. It seemed to slip, so I ended up actually having it rest on my ears, and so that wasn't very comfortable either. So. Um, if it were a different tie or rather cord or maybe like t-shirt string or something that maybe it might have been more comfortable. But okay. as I said, I, I wasn't able to breathe that well. So I was looking for something else and I made one that's probably similar to um, what Vicki made. Uh, mm -hmm. What Carolyn was referring to as a 3D kind of mask. So I just made these this weekend as samples and um, you start with a rectangle and with various folds, you end up with um, this center rectangular section that sits away from your face. And the top part, you can see on the orange, I've got it set up the way you would put it onto your face. You, it sticks out that far from, from your mouth and nose. Um, I also have an aluminum um, bar that goes across for the nose. And I also used one eighth inch round elastic for the uh, ear loops. Um, questions, because I'm not explaining it very well, I'm sure. <laughs> if you are interested in making this kind, um, if you look at the video that I was referring to, there were a couple tricky places because there was no um, explanation. It was really more of um, just follow what they did. So um, I think I have your video link down there. So okay. Okay. So if there's had this, yeah. And I can show people if there's an interest in that. Um, when we f finish the slides. So this is what I uh, on the on the left is the uh, coated wire that I used originally on those um, first masks and then we found these aluminum strips on Amazon, and I used that on the second set of masks that I made. Okay. So, There's Kathy, how are the um, your second pattern that you're making? How comfortable are those? Have you worn those? Um, my husband said that he thought he could breathe better, and and. He didn't like using the, um, even with the toggle, he didn't like having to um, 
worry about if he had it on right and and it, it was just a lot faster and easier for him to loop it over his ears and he said he was able to breathe well enough in in the uh, that second one so he he likes that second one mm -hmm. okay oh john back yeah june's here okay june i'm gonna start here Hi, this is Jun. Um, so I, is, I don't know if Josie's still on, but um, I oh, had... Um, she had to get off. Sorry. Oh, okay, because of her kids, yeah. Um, so we had, um, had, I had talked to her about, I thought it would be uh, maybe a good idea to make masks for farm workers. And um, because we had, I'd been sewing masks for one of the hospitals and then they said, oh, that we don't need any more. So... Um, so I wanted to do a farm workers project and I asked some women at Buddhist Church of Oakland who joined. And then I talked to Josie Camacho and Victor Uno, um, who are um, uh, Asian Pacific American Labor Alliance uh, Union members and organizers. And they put me in touch with a na woman named Bonita, who is a, a union organizer for United Farm Workers in the Salinas Valley. And she's been uh, working there since she was, um, I think, in high school as a volunteer, and then she went to college and went to law school, and she's kept working there all this time. So now she's an attorney with UFW. So um, she was very happy to uh, get our masks. We were going to start small with Swantonberry um, Organic Farm that has a you know all union farm, uh, but we had got so many masks that uh, we went larger. Um, so. The people listed are here on the, um, I don't know if you can see the names, but um, these are almost all the hand-sewn masks. And then um, Victor and Josie through the union bought some um, union-sewn masks. So we saw the, so the hand-sewn masks are about 300 and uh, the union purchase masks were 200. So we, we donated over 500 masks. Um, I told people to use whatever pattern they like best. Um, so, uh, so we got a variety of uh, different masks. There's the JC pattern. Um, a lot of people use the Kaiser pattern. I use the Kaiser pattern. And um, there were some masks at the top that were too, um, that were too big of a rectangle on the top left. So my friend Betty Jo Yamamoto re-sewed those, put in a couple extra pleats uh, and um, redid the ear, the ear uh, pieces. So that was really kind of Betty to do that. I think all the names are listed here. I wish I could have find Jose's uh, picture. Jose and Kim Nasu belong to Buddhist Church of Oakland. And when I put out the call, he wrote back and said that he's been, I think, sewing since he was about eight years old. And I can't find the cute picture uh, Kimmy sent of him at his sewing machine but got a really good response and we're um, doing round two right now. There's some beautiful uh, sewing and fabric here. So, so that's that project. If anybody wants to join and donate a couple of masks to the United Farm Workers Project, I'm collecting them. Oh, and then these really cute tags were each hand uh, cut out and stamped by Joyce Yokomizu at our temple. So we tied a, um, a, a, a little uh, thanks to each one. And then we um, uh, folded origami, either cranes or uh, hearts. And it went in with each, each package. Each uh, package had two uh, masks in it. So I think, oh, oh the other thing that um, I found was a lot of people were out. Oh, and this is a, a Bonita in the center and her husband. She's the organizer and lawyer for United Farm Workers and uh, Victor Uno and Josie Camacho and me delivering the masks. So we met somewhere halfway between uh, Salinas and, uh, and, and Berkeley. Oh, so the one tip I have um, that I thought was really exciting was uh, some of us ran out of elastic and I saw on YouTube this video of taking a you know, used 100% cotton t-shirt and cutting a, a one inch strip 
all the way across. It, it's a loop, but you have to cut it so that it's a straight piece. And then you take that piece and you just tug on each end and it rolls up on itself. Um, and, and you don't have to sew it at all. Um, and it makes a really, really comfortable um, uh, ties. And then I did it the same way that, um, that, that uh, Carolyn did, where it's a U on the bottom, goes through the channel, and then it ties at the top. You could put a, a bead on each uh, end so that it doesn't slip through the channel. But the, um, and if you're interested, I can send a link to this, this YouTube, but um, I made a lot of, uh, of uh, ties out of the, uh, out of the used t-shirts. Thank you. Hey, okay. here were some of the submitted questions. So here are some of the places where you could buy the Japanese fabric. Does anybody have anywhere else to add? I, I discovered a place in Washington called Quilting Foxes. Quilting Boxes, okay. Mm -hmm. I missed um, Minako's suggestion. I kind of heard it, but I didn't hear the name. I think she was suggesting a place to get fabric. Was that? Stone that Mountain. Right? Oh, that's where Minako was saying? Yeah, yes. To order it from? Yes, you can order oh, and okay. pick up. I've, I've done that, so. Oh, okay. Like a curbside pickup thing? Curbside pickup, yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. I think the new pieces is open though. They let people go into the store. And this is off of uh, Gilman and Forth. Mm. So they actually let people into the store. I'm not sure about Bay Quilts. And Kimono Monos. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Bay Quilts is not open to the public yet. Okay. And Kimono Mono, I bought online. Mm. Uh, I don't, they're not having any open houses right now. Well, and it's really she, good that these stores are still in business. I'm happy to hear that. Well, I think a lot of people are sewing, so they're doing all right. Oh, okay, good, good. Be because Stone Mountain, uh, I'm on their email list too. They had advertised one fabric and it was gone in like oh. two days. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're, they're doing okay, I think. Let's see, here are some other questions. Has anyone used any lighter weight fabric for their um, lining, mass lining? <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> And um, I think everybody's talked about different kinds of cording and elastic. What about patterns that are less time consuming than the JC pattern? Someone asked. I think once you get used to a pattern, it goes fast myself once you get used to a pattern. And then someone asked about the 3D mask where how they could put a filter in it. And uh, I found one website for her and Kathy's uh, website also tells you how to put a filter pocket in. Those were the only questions we had. Anything else? Does anyone have any other questions? Uh, I do, this is Kathy. Um, ah. What uh, kind of filters are people using? I, I keep hearing coffee f uh, filters, but I'm wondering, uh, do you leave it if it's like a cone shape, do you leave it double or do you have it single? And um, Carolyn, you were using Pellon. What kind of Pellon do you? I'm I, using I, a mid mid weight Pellon because I had it and I and I underlined the both the front and the back, so I have four layers, and it's washable. So. So it's it's a fusible one that you use. No, it's not oh. fusible. Okay. I'm just, I figure if it's fusible and you keep washing it, the fusing is going to come off. True. Okay. So I'm just using plain mid-weight uh, Pellon on, as underlining for the top and the bottom. Okay. Um, this is Joan. I have a question. With the uh, metal pieces for the nose, uh, do they go through the washing machine just as well as hand washing? Have, has anybody had any problems with those? 
I've washed mine and I haven't had the problems. With the washing machine? No, right. Um, just on a gentle cycle and I put mm -hmm. them in a, one of those little um, bags, yeah. laundry bags. Mm -hmm. The hard part is, is uh, ironing the pleats mm -hmm. <laughs> when you have the pleated. I mean, you don't really need to, to iron them, but okay. I guess if you want to make it look like you had just made it, you know, ironing the pleats is hard. I haven't had any problems with it either. It's, it's encased, so. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd like to donate some uh, masks to the UFW and that, who will contact. That would be great. Thank you. Is this Joan Hamamoto? Yeah. I think I'm on the email that Jill or Carolyn sent out for this meeting. Okay. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. I can too. It's Carolyn. I can donate oh, some also. Thank you, Carolyn. Wow, this is great. I have to make them, but I'll. <laughs> That's but okay. I'll make we some. have time. We're not. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? Does JC need any more masks? Do you know, Jill? Um. Yeah, I will check. Um. You know, we. They say home. You know. Right. Right. Um. Yeah, I will check. We had such a great, thank you everyone for all of your donations early on that really helped with our volunteers. We are needing to recruit new volunteers. So it's always nice to have some masks to give to them. And, um, you know, JC Home has been doing okay because they don't, you know, they don't go out. <laughs> they kind of stay in the room, although they are starting to receive uh, family visits outside, so they will need to wear their masks more. And also with um, kind of the opening up, I think there's, I've heard more of a need for children's masks, and there was that whole debate whether children needed to wear them and such. So I think that's a need. Um, and then, Kay, you know that um, pattern um, with the plate, the simple one that Susan makes? Um, it's like a round plate and you cut it in half or something. Can you ex describe that one? I think that's the one Kathy Kojimoto was talking about. You've never made it? Okay. Um, anyways, uh, my sister-in-law Susan said that one's really easy to make and it's also very comfortable and easy to wear. It's not one maybe that for an all day thing, but if you're just needing something because you're going to put gas in the car or, you know, run to the market. And so um, it's, it's a pretty easy to wear and um, easy to make. So I'll look for that pattern. Um, I, have. I have a question about, um, I have had difficulty keeping the tie on my head and I have hearing aids and I sort of, if it's the elastic is soft, I figured out a way to be really careful how to take the hearing aids. I mean, how to put the elastic around my ears. But how do you keep the, other than if I wear a ponytail, I can do it, but how do you keep the tie on, the, on your head? <laughs> is it, maybe it's my flat head. I don't, I, I've been able to, I'm not, I don't use it that much. Mm -hmm. um, when I go golfing once in a while, I use it, but. I have a hat on, so it stays on the hat, so. I have seen these um, kind of extenders, uh, if you, I guess it's for the ear oh. ones, where um, you have a piece of, of like a button that you yes. put behind and, and um, although that, I think that would slip down too. No, I've, I've seen that for when, around the ear ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and you just, yeah, I've seen oh. them on Etsy or something yeah, with a button. Yeah, with a button. Right, right. Oh, but you're talking about the tie ones. Yeah. yeah. I, I've seen the one where the elastic goes all the way around the back of the head mm -hmm. for people with hearing aids in two places. Wow. But I haven't tried making that. Have you guys seen this one? I'm going to play it for you. It 
if I can find it here. I've lost um, ability to see your. Uh, it's gone now. I, oh. I'm going to play. Let me see if I can. I'm just playing this little nursery rhyme. <laughs> When in public wear a mask, just a teeny weeny task. It helps keep us safe and sound, health and care all around. On your mouth and on your nose, good to cover That's both it. of those. <laughs> <laughs> this is Kathy Lee. I'd also like to um, donate masks, but I don't see June's email. Okay, June, oh. you have to unmute. I'm going to put my email in the chat, but also I think Jill or Carolyn could also, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you can't get at the chat. Could, yeah, uh, we can share June's email. And also, oftentimes um, people will drop off mass and say it's for June <laughs> and then she can come pick it up. Yeah. So if you wanted okay. to drop it at JSA, that yeah. would be I'll, yeah. oh, I'll that's do a that. good way. I'll yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you have a specific date you're going for next? We haven't, um, we haven't uh, set a, a date yet. I need to get back in touch with Bonita and, okay. and, and see. So, so it's still like a month, at least a month out. Okay, so that'll be my, uh, my next October project. Is that okay? Oh, that sounds great. Thanks <laughs> so right. much. One, two. I think I'll make ties though. I'm gonna make ties. Okay. Because they're more adjustable. Mm -hmm. For people because I think with the ear the elastic well I'll try it with toggles elastic oh, yeah. with toggles and they'll, that'd be adjustable I'll try that hmm. we did a variety of styles I think um, you know hoping that uh, they would fit you know pe people. yeah because people have different uh, you know face structures and it might be different for different people I, I know my doctor was saying her husband has a really big head so mm -hmm. the, <laughs> the surgical masks don't work for him. Oh, yeah. So I sent her. I sent her my pattern to say you could measure your husband and then try to make oh, him yeah, make yeah. a mask. Yeah. Nice. This is Susan. I'm I'm not a seamstress, and I only made three or four masks. And I'm 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 um, on the session oh, simply because okay. I wanted to see what everybody recommended as a simple but effective mask that someone that doesn't sew a lot could sew. <laughs> mm. I mean, is there a consensus that maybe the Kaiser mask or, uh, you know, I've gone on YouTube and got so confused looking at so many different patterns. Oh. And I don't know now that we're so far down the road, what might be recommended for making maybe another half dozen without it taking me a week. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I mean, what would you suggest, which pattern would you suggest I use? Because I was using the one with the three pleats that came out really early on. And, and I did master that, so it wasn't too bad, but I just figured maybe by now there's something more simple and or more effective that doesn't gap so much on the side. Hmm. If not, I think I'll just go back to using that because that's the only one I know and I got comfortable with it, but um, I don't know. Susan, is it comfortable for you to, to breathe in if you have to wear it for for time? Well, if I use the dose piece, I was cutting out those little uh, clips on file folders, the, the file folders that offices mm -hmm. use to, you know, punch two holes and put your paper in. Right. I was cutting those out and that worked as a nose piece pretty well. And if I do that, it's okay, but after a prolonged period, it does get kind of moist, and I that's what I don't like about it. So right. I saw the one about origami, some guy in Japan, but it looks so complicated. <laughs> but to me, I mean, that would be a challenge if I had the time, but I, I really don't, so I don't know. Well, I, I was the one that was making the 3D mask. I can show you more, and, and I can give you some of those aluminum strips, too. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's it's handy that we're so close, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sure. 
I don't think mine's that easy to make. It's breathable though. There's a there's an opening like this and it fits tight against the face. If you're making it for yourself or your family, it's fine. But for other people, you just kind of have to guess on the size. Mm -hmm. But I'll Does make they, those. Yeah, I'll make those in a couple sizes. Does the Kaiser mask have enough pleats in it to allow for more breathing? I don't. It should. A number of people made them. Is Kay gone? No. Oh, Kay. Mine was the New York Times. It was nine and a half inches by six and a half inches, basically. It's similar to the Kaiser Master with the pleats. Yeah, it's a pleated one. It was in yeah. The, yeah. I, I've done the Kaiser Mask, and it has like a double pleat at the top. So um, it gives you a little bit more room in your nose, but it's still like pressed right against your nose. But it's a little, I, I felt it's more comfortable than the masks that have the single pleats on the side. So I don't know if we answered Susan's question or not. <laughs> well, I'll struggle along. <laughs> Too bad we can't have a class, huh? <laughs> yeah. So the JSA pattern is still being used. Is, is do people still um, think that oh, that's a good design? No. No. Okay. I think I'm the only one still using it. <laughs> um, I find that I have it down pat, and I could mass produce them. And the people that I give them to, they love them. So I haven't changed the pattern. Well, I like Karen Morioka's idea about wearing it upside down because I mailed some to some friends in the city. It cost me more to mail one than to make <laughs> one. It was like three eighty-five a package to mail one. <laughs> but she sent me a photo and she had it upside down. And my sister wore it upside down also. So here. Oh, I didn't think of that. Oh. So it covers your chin better. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so if you put a nose piece in it, put it on the other side. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I had a question. Um, has anybody had any experience doing like logo masks? Um, like something that's silk screened and Oh, no. Just curious. I haven't. I've been just using leftover quilting fabric, so. Jill, did you like that idea of the uh, rice sack auction they had, the Grateful Cranes? They had a fundraiser, and they sold them for $25 each. Wow. And I thought it was really cool. Would Jay say like something like that? Yeah. You know, we're um, trying to think about the next few months. And um, in November and December, um, you know, we have different programs. For December last year, we had a craft fair. Remember Kathy and Carolyn? And we were thinking of a different way of doing something similar to that, but easier right because it needs to be online and maybe something like selling a mass or doing some kind of um like you're suggesting an auction or you know online like we have so many we have i don't know 20 of these rice sack masks at this so first come first serve and have people buy they sold yeah. out on, yeah on that one so, i have i have a rice sack. Oh, you do? That I, haven't, I, that I haven't done anything with, and it's been sitting in one of my drawers for a long time. Huh. How many so do you make out of one? No, because you'd want the pattern on it, so you didn't want the plain fabric, so it depends on what you could cut. Mm. So pr probably could make quite a bit. Yeah, that's a great idea. 
Well, that'll be my November project then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to trying to do different projects every month. So yeah, and also like in December, other gift type items like Anne. I know you do pickling or you know that kind of stuff or jams. Those would could do well. Yeah. Um, and if you have a graphic artist who can silk screen that JSA logo just on some cotton material. Oh, yeah. That would be nice. Okay. It's kind of bright, the yellow and blue. And it yeah. would be oh, that's a cute idea. Um, yeah. Does anyone have an embroidery machine? Oh. oh. Remember I Audrey used to have one? I never yeah, used, to. She used to. I think she got rid of it. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, it's complicated. Uh, you know, the, the um, 50th anniversary JSA logo is very nice. Oh, that's right. So lots of good ideas. Or you could put it on a sticker and then just have that sticker on a white. <laughs> <laughs> and remove it. Yeah. That would be nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if there are other ideas you guys have, I mean, we said you know, it, wouldn't it be nice to do a class online? I don't, I don't know. Um, but Kathy's working on that new mask. If that's something people are interested in at some point, you know. I think, I think that'd be kind of hard. I mean, it goes, yeah. You'd have to have your sewing machine there. Well, yeah, yeah, but maybe you can show the parts that are complicated, you know. The way we do our cooking classes is, you know, like they're. That's true. Yeah, we we, they they have the videos online too, which means you can go back over to the next step if you need to see it again. So mm -hmm. I think the uh, YouTube videos are pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jill, I have to leave now, but um, I wanted to thank you for organizing and and also um, for everybody participating. And uh, thank you, Carolyn, for. Um, doing the slideshow. I really enjoyed it. Well, thank you. I like your mask a lot. <laughs> <laughs> little little yeah. tiny art pieces, huh? You know, if you ever want to do like a fa fabric exchange for ins inspiration, oh, that's do something like that, right? It might be fun. <laughs> Got a lot of that. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> okay, well, it's good seeing everybody. Okay, See thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Yeah. Everybody. Bye. Okay. Bye.